This time on the show, Shannon's bypassing not safe for work filters, and I get lost looking for packets in all the wrong places. I'm Darren Kitchen. You're watching Hack Five. Yeah, yeah, hook me up. I'm ready. This episode of Hack Five is brought to you by Squarespace, GoToAssist Express. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. It's 77 degrees on a beautiful Sunday here in the East Bay. I got 93 octane in my bike, I've got my GPS set, and I got the danger zone on my iPod. But I need to do a Hack 5 segment. So this begs the question, can I have it all? Can I do both? Can I ride the twisties and get work done? Yeah, well considering that I am going to two conferences back to back this week, uh, SIGGRAPH in LA, which is like the epic computer graphics conference, and well, DEF CON in Los Angeles, I'm sorry, Las Vegas, that is the quintessential hacker con. Yeah, now is a great time to test out a new bit of kit. And you guys know that I'm a huge fan of the fruit. I mean, this pineapple and I have been getting into a whole bunch of mischief fun for the last two years, and well, we're about to open a whole nother can of worms here in a couple weeks. But, uh, but what about when it comes to packet sniffing on the go? Well, today that's what it's all about, and if you are rocking Android, then you're just in luck. Last week I rooted ye old droid again. You can see me do it step by step for 2.0.1 on Hack 5 episode 618, or on Android Atlas uh, episode 7 for 2.1. But suffice it to say, it has quickly become one of my favorite packet sniffing platforms. Armed with two root applications, Wi-Fi Tether and Shark, I'm able to mimic some of the Wi-Fi Pineapple functionality. No, it doesn't do the karma bit. That is to say, it's not the SSID equivalent of the mirror in the first Harry Potter film. You know, because it looks like what you want it to see, or you get the idea. It's not replacing the fruity goodness anytime. But as a basic honey pot hotspot, it'll do the trick. Wi Fi Tether allows me to create an access point sharing the 3G connection on my phone with a handful of clients. There are options for security like WEP or WPA, MAC address filtering, and the like. But for this application, we want an enticing open access point. Even better if the SSID happens to be one remembered by potential victims. I mean clients, like T-Mobile or Linksys. When it comes to sniffing packets on Android, there are a few different options. The aptly named Packet Sniffer is a root app that depends on first installing the command line program TCP dump, which is easily accomplished if you've got a cool terminal. I like better terminal. It comes with a couple of nifty options like wget, which is great for downloading the pre-compiled TCP dump for Android, you just set a couple of permissions and away you go. Shark, on the other hand, is a lot easier to get started with. It sports a familiar looking icon and it's a decent packet sniffer. It's basically a front end for TCP dump, but there's no need to drop to the prompt and install anything by hand. Shark allows you to specify a few parameters, stop and start captures, and then open the PCAP files with its very own Shark Reader. I found the Shark Reader to be lacking much functionality. So at the end of the day, when it comes to real packet analysis, your best bet is to comb through the PCAP on a real computer using Wireshark or the like. All right. Well, that didn't work out so well, did it? Well, no. I followed the Google map, I think until the 3G coverage ran out. Yeah, no coverage, no bars, no bars, no people. Gorgeous road, I'll give you that. Loving the twisties here, but this is not so good for packet sniffing. Well, maybe, maybe this guy wants some free Wi-Fi. Free Wi-Fi, anyone? No? All right, no free Wi-Fi for anyone. Yeah, I don't know why I'm talking to you anyway. You're a motorcycle. I really need to get the rest of the cast out here. That looks like fun.
Now I know what you're thinking, Android is based on Linux. The Wi-Fi Pineapple runs Yazaga on OpenWRT, which is Linux. What are the chances that Yazaga will run on a droid? Well, unfortunately it comes down to the drivers. Robin Wood did a hell of a job porting Mad Wi-Fi to OpenWRT so Karma would run on it, our little Fawn or Acton router if you will. But it's been our experience that you're only going to get the packet injection goodness you need from an Atheris based chipset. It's not to say it's impossible from something like a Rollin Broadcom, but for something off the shelf as it were, I haven't seen it. I'm not logging the packets. All right, taking a serious break from the segment for a second. If you ever have the opportunity to come right here and I'll put GPS coordinates, do it. Oh my God. Seriously, on a motorcycle, it feels like you're riding through the forest of Endor. I think that tree must be like 30 feet around. So there's a couple of lessons learned here, and I think first and foremost, while the droid is definitely capable of becoming a Wi-Fi hotspot, honeypot, little packet capturing going on, I guess like real estate, location, 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 while the hills of Oakland are gorgeous and this beach here in San Pablo Bay is breathtaking, it's not really where you want to be looking for potential victims. Now I can say with confidence though that in the city it has worked out really well uh, and I will be bringing it this week to DEF CON and I guess I will be seeing you guys from there next week but until then, I'm gonna enjoy this. Squarespace is a publishing system for anyone looking to build a blog, portfolio, or any kind of website. With blog tools that allow for iPhone updating on the go, hassle-free importing of sites from other environments, robust stats, and much more, Squarespace makes it super easy for anyone to build out and maintain a site that you could only dream of with other platforms. And if you have coding experience, Squarespace allows you to delve into the code and customize things even further. Tens of thousands of people all across the internet have been using Squarespace for years and their already great service is only getting better by the day. On July 14th, Squarespace announced a huge round of capital investment that will allow them to expand at an even faster rate. We want to congratulate Squarespace and are truly excited to work with such great people. Head over to squarespace.com to get a 14-day free trial and be sure to use the promotion code HACK5, H-A-K-5, when placing your order to get 10% off the lifetime of your account. If I had a dollar for every single time one of my friends emailed me some website while I was at work at my old office job and I was worried that it was either not safe for work or maybe it was a prank website or something with a bad word on it, something like that, well, I'd have a lot of dollars because I'm way too curious for my own good. But luckily there's ways to open websites while you're at work without getting flagged by IT. The first one I found is, well, short, short URLs. Everybody knows about those. If you just lay your mouse over a short URL, it doesn't give you any info. So you go to longurl.org, plug in the short URL, and find out where it goes. Long URL luckily supports all of those short URLs like Bitly and PingFM, all the popular ones that everybody knows about. And it also gives you a thumbnail of the website that you're about to go to, just in case. But if there's a bad word or some kind of phrase on that site that you can't really see from the thumbnail, that's not really going to help you. And that's why we have pdfmyurl.com, which will turn any website into a PDF that you can save onto your hard drive. You never go to the website, you just plug in the website name, hit the P, and it starts the download and conversion into a PDF. Maybe you're not too prone about saving a PDF onto your desktop because mm, your work desktop has a desktop sniffer of some sort. If this is the case, you can use Aviary. Go over to aviary.com and add in any website name, and you'll get a bitmap image of the site without having to visit it. 
Or perhaps in another example, you have a coworker who likes to lean over or who likes to stop by your, you know, your office every day and really likes to check out whatever you're looking for online. And maybe you're being safe, but it's just plain annoying. If that's the case, there is a way to get around this as well. You can go to variablysfw.adspot.com and plug in a website name. Hold down your mouse button and slowly move it downwards to see more of the page in the little narrow bar at the top. That way your coworker won't be exactly able to see everything that you're trying to check out. You'll just have a little bar that they might not be able to see, but you can see since you're sitting right in front of your computer. So, what do you think? I think these are great ways to keep yourself from getting in trouble at work and maybe possibly stumbling upon something that you really don't want to see for pretty much the rest of your life. Email me over at feedback at hack5.org. Let me know what you think. And we'll be right back after a brief word from one of our sponsors. If you're in technical support, you know how much time you waste just getting to a customer or colleague's computer. Great news! The new GoToAssist Express remote support brought to you by Citrix lets you resolve issues faster, reduce travel costs, and keep clients satisfied so you can move to the next task more quickly without leaving your office. Try GoToAssist Express free for 30 days. For this special offer, you must visit gotoassist.com slash hack5. That's gotoassist.com slash hak5 for a free trial. This week's trivia question is, this motherboard form factor measures a mere 17 by 17 centimeters. Visit hack5.org slash trivia for your chance to win some killer new Hack 5 stickers. We'll be right back after a brief word from one of our sponsors. I can't believe it. You broke the ducky domain I once already taken. Are you registering domain names in the shower again? Of course. Great ideas start with great domains. I get all my great ideas in the shower. You do? Well, first, but I'm big into multitasking. You can do just about anything in the shower. Then forget the weak sauce domains. Get a .co at Twitter. I missed the shizzle. Dude, great idea and great domain. What? Oh, please, if this is wrong, I want to be right. That's right. .co domains are now live. They're the biggest domain since .com, and you can get them now over at domain.com. And while you're there, check out their virtual private servers. They provide unrestricted root access on Windows or Linux. They're easy to manage with cPanel and Plesk, and they're capable of hosting just about any size website. You may have even heard our very own hack5.org is pimped out on a domain.com VPS. No matter where you are your next idea, remember, Domain.com is the place to save 15% off at checkout with coupon code HAK5. Got a great idea? It all starts with a great domain. Domain.com. If you've got the Technoless like Michael from Romania with his custom notebook skin, make sure to email us your photos over at feedback at hack5.org. Also, don't forget we have brand new hack packs over at hack5.org slash store. And the fastest and easiest way to subscribe to your favorite show is on YouTube and iTunes. Also, last but not least, yay, the Hack 5 anniversary five-year birthday party is coming up in August. We're going to be having a big birthday bash over in San Francisco, so if you're in the Bay Area, make sure to go over to hack5.org slash five years for all the details and info you need on the party. Until next week, I'm Shannon Morse. Remember to trust your technolust. I got a yingling in Missouri. Yes, I know. Enter for your chance to, uh, no. What am I saying? Ah, uh, the best part about living in California and having a motorcycle. There's never any traffic. Trivia. I mean, oh, I need a beer. Oh. The hills are alive with the sound of Wi-Fi. I'm sorry, that was too much, wasn't it? I know.